With creation stories, none of the things that happened were easy. There was always problems. Things always happen. There was always turmoil. But there's always something you're going to learn from it. I'm a farmer and an owner of Coffee Pot Farms on the Navajo Nation. It's hard work, but it's worth it. America has always been associated with making it. But is that opportunity available to all? This is what it looks like to be made in America. So we're at the beginning of the season. Everything right now is time sensitive and crucial. All of this is we're picking them for the farmer's market tomorrow in Winslow. What we're gonna do is pick in the evening, clean it, and then it's gonna go into the cooler. We're ready to go in the morning. We have no electricity or running water, so we're off grid. So Mike, he has to haul water in every other day. In the summer, he's gotta haul water every day. Honey, bubble's ready? Got the yeah, lettuce. We're ready to go. All righty. I get to do this with Mike, my husband. I came up here with my work with Federal Express, and then in 2018, we decided we're gonna go into business for ourselves. That was the beginning of what you see now. Mike, he's very loyal, he's very supportive. I think that's what I was needing, is just somebody who is gonna be like full supportive of what you do. One of the goals of the farm is to not have to go back and work for somebody else. We want to be self-sufficient. We want to employ local people here because jobs here are on the decline. The opportunity for generational wealth building within tribal communities is something that has not taken hold yet. If there's a chance with this proliferation of small businesses, that could really turn some communities around. That could be really limitless. Wow, that's really exciting. <laughs> that almost makes me teary-eyed, yeah. I grew up on this land. My mom and dad did live here for a time. The farm is named after this butte. My dad calls it Coffee Pot because it looks like a coffee pot. Coffee Pot Butte, Coffee Pot Farms. We got up about four this morning. We didn't really sleep that much just because I think we're excited. The season's just now started, so we'll be at the farmer's market seeing everybody. I'm trying to go as fast as I can here. There's one thing to do, then there's another thing to get done. Your farmer's list is never ending. It keeps going. <laughs> okay, we're ready to go. My background has been in social work and public health. We did a lot of education in the classrooms and telling kids, eat your five fruits and vegetables every day. And then on Navajo, when you teach that, it's hard for them to do some of that because there's not the access to the produce. On Navajo, there's 13 grocery stores and in between there's convenience stores that don't have a lot of fresh produce. We need families to be healthy. We want kids to be healthy. If we're not healthy, then our community can't go on. Navajo Nation is sovereign, but not really because most of their budget comes from the federal government. On Navajo Nation, there's no ownership of land. After 65 years, it will go back and trust to the federal government. We can't take out loans. That lack of access to capital, what it means to us is that we have to work harder. Historically, the government did not trust tribes to make their own decisions. These legacy burdens, also known as intergenerational trauma, it manifests in multiple ways. I feel like sometimes people say, ah, just get over it. It takes a lot of therapy to get over some of this stuff. You're going through all of these process of anger, depression. You get to this place where you're gonna finally be able to accept it. I think we haven't gotten there. I think some of us are still angry. You have to heal in however way you're gonna heal. We are now in this renaissance of rebuilding of nationhood. 
And we're seeing that things are working in tribes' favors because they're deciding for themselves. So this is one of the first farmer's markets of the season. Do you wanna make sure you establish that relationship with your customers? There's not anyone here that's selling vegetables. We are filling a hole in the market. All right, thank you, thank you, appreciate it. Uh-huh, yep, enjoy the eggs. We had done this customer discovery and we found that 60% of our customers want education. That's what I wanna provide. This is the knowledge, this is the tools, and then you have me still after you leave to come back and ask questions. So after the farmer's market here, we're gonna go put up some flyers just to advertise to Winslow that we have a CSA program. COVID on Navajo was really bad and we weren't able to go out to do any selling of our produce. We didn't call it the CSA at the time because we're just like, okay, let's just put a weekly food box together and let's just put it out there and see what happens. The CSA model is good for us because our customers pay upfront the costs and we can use that money to pay for seeds, to pay for other equipment. This is gonna be our first year doing our CSA. We're gonna start in June, so another month. Come on, Wynn, let us have some internet. All right, there we go. It's all about marketing. One of the pieces is making sure that we can tell our story also using the website. Internet access is really hard on the Navajo Nation, and we got ours last fall because we applied for a grant. Not having access to the internet gets in the way of us being able to do the full potential of what we could. Without connectivity, we don't have access to information, can't apply to jobs. You're cut off from that without those connectivity opportunities. Hi, it's so good to see you again. So you don't have a website yet. Let's first talk about what your online goals are. What we want the website to do is show a little bit of our story, who we are, where we're growing. We want to be able to sell through our website. I do want to be able to try to sell our CSA, our Community Supported Agriculture. We can definitely help you sell from your website. Here are some quick ideas of how that would look. I like that, that's, that's really good. I like the I like the simplicity of the layout on it. It looks pretty manageable for a layman like me. Um, <laughs> I'm so thankful for that. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Of course. Together we're going to make this just how you guys want it. We're on the internet. Woohoo! Thank you so much. Okay. Talk to you guys soon. Bye. That's pretty cool, huh? Nice. Yes. Here we got peppers, some squash. I got beets here. And then here we have a whole bunch of chilies. These are all baby plants right now, but in a few months, they're all gonna be grown up and we're gonna have food. Out in the front here, it's all gonna be green. It's gonna look so pretty. All right, let's get it done. Here we go. Tomatoes are the most labor intensive crop you will ever grow because in a moment's notice, it can all go wrong. Our first season, we grew enough for maybe one salad. <laughs> Last year was really good. We were able to grow roughly around 2,000 pounds. We're on track to quadruple that, so we're at about 9,000 pounds this year. I'm excited, but I'm also nervous because that's more food than we've ever grown. That's pretty good for a small farm. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Dang it. You guys are done. This one's not going to make it. You can just see he's not going to make it. Yeah, I think they're done. Shoot. The temperature early in the morning, it just went and it dropped. The tomatoes froze. They all died. So we pulled them out. They're gone. It sucked. 
it was a really bad day. We were calculating the cost like of what the plants would produce in terms of money and it was between like $10,000, $14,000. That was how much we had lost and I was like, holy crap. Devastating, oh my God. Weird and scary to think that you lost that much money. I'm seeing money differently. I'm, I, I'm seeing it as a way to use it as that tool. Just another tool on the farm, right? Even though we lost that much money in the tomatoes, it, it's still a learning process. Money is, is different now. Um, I still wanna learn how to make it, to make things better. How do I raise capital, raise money to help the community still? We are on our way to a meeting to see if we can get a contract for Coffee Pot Farms to provide our local produce to the Winslow seniors, kind of like a CSA. This was really important during COVID because, you know, a lot of seniors were getting really sick. They've been looking for somebody in our region to partner with them. If we get this contract, the seniors will get our produce and will not have to pay out of their pocket. I'm excited for today, but I'm more nervous. Thanks for being here to talk about the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program. I have some really good news. It's definitely going to work out, and we're really excited awesome. to bring you on yes. as a vendor. Thank yeah. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So our timing goals for this is to get this started within the next month. All right. For us, then, it's go time. It's it go is. Time. It is go time, and we're excited. Oh, my God. It went really good, and I'm, like, so happy, excited. I can't wait to get this done. I gotta go home, you know, look at the crop plan, make sure we have things so it's all get home and it's planning time. We're gonna start in June. It's happening fast. It's kind of scary a little bit. This here is our crop plan. What we're doing here has a list of all the stuff we plan to grow, the start date, the seeding date, and we're trying to reach a certain target range for this CSA. It's challenging, and it's challenging in a way that excites me. I feel ready, even though I'm still a little nervous, but I, I feel way better about it. I feel like I know what to expect. What we've built out here is a labor of love, and we're extremely proud of it. And there's much more to come. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it, and I wouldn't want to do anything else. I want to keep advocating and just be the voice of teaching people to eat a new way that's my purpose. That's what I want to do. On the next episode of Made in America, Dizzy and his crew face down their first halftime show while Cheryl navigates a drought and family hardship to deliver to her community. Please join us.